Okay, believe it or not, while my videos are budget and uh, simple and quick, I do put a lot of forethought into most of them, and I did put a lot of forethought into this one. Um, there is no question that I've owned more lenses and tested and used more lenses than anybody else on YouTube, uh, specifically in uh, the uh, Nikon ecosystem. And uh, yeah, more than that guy too, whoever it is you're thinking of, I've definitely used or owned more than he has. And uh, I really had to narrow down a list to the absolute best lenses. Now, if you don't see the lens here that I've strongly recommended, that means that it is still excellent, but it did not fit a very, very long list of criteria. Now, uh, this is one video where I'm not taking budget into consideration. You know, what's the best value or the best bang for your buck? I simply went as the premise for this video and these 14 lenses, which I meant to be 10, but I had to keep it at 14. You know, I wanted it to be 10 lenses, but I couldn't. I had to include it, stop it at these 14 of the long list that I made. So, the basis of those criteria, money was no object. If money's no object, which of course it is an object for most people, I, I had to make that. What's the best lens? Boom. What's it? I don't care what it costs. What is it? What is that uh, ah lens uh, that is exquisite, that will just make you happier than a worm in a pile of poo, happier than a pervert in a porn store? <laughs> hey, I'm being slightly funny, but being completely dead serious about this video. And I had to narrow things down and look over every single lens and make sure it could be included. And I came down with these last. Now, not all of these are Nikkor lenses. There is one Tamron lens here, there are three Zeiss lenses here, Carl Zeiss, and there is one Voigtlander lens right smack in the middle, right there. Um, so, the criteria, the attributes, the quality. For example, the, the Nikon uh, 2470 uh, 2.8 is uh, a rather fragile lens, but uh, many precision things are fragile. It is certainly not the sharpest lens in the world. Now this is the non-G series lens, the current new lens of this with vibration reduction, and it's a lot larger and heavier, a lot more expensive. It's nowhere near as good. And I told you that before it came out, and I was 100% correct. But this lens has made more money from more professional photographers than any other lens on Earth in history, bar none, flat out. This is Nikon's moneymaker. It's made in Japan. It is very precise. It is an exquisite lens, albeit fragile, and not, you know, supremely sharp. But any professional photographer that's worth their weight in salt at all will tell you that sharpness is not everything. It has qualities, characteristics, bokeh, autofocus speed, uh, color saturation, uh, rendi uh, rendition, um, not perceived depth, but rendered depth, and I've explained that in another video. That means that this lens had to be included. You will notice that there are only three zoom lenses here. That should tell you something. Um, but I've uh, reiterated that many, many times over, but some things are unavoidable, and uh, even if a lens has a flat rendition, you know, one attribute alone will not kill a lens. One lens could be absolutely exquisite, even if it fails in one attribute, because there is no perfect lens. The best lenses in the world have issues. They're either, you know, manual focus, or they have some sort of a detractor. So I went over a long list of attributes to include these lenses, and these are it. Um, the one guy on YouTube that's owned more Nikkor lenses and tested more Nikkor lenses than anybody else uh, well, that seems like a, a boisterous statement or egotistical. I don't give a damn if you think it is. It's a damn fact. It's a fact. And here they are. Now, I had to leave out my subjective opinions, beliefs, feelings, and convictions. I just go on a hardcore empirical facts. What is the silk, sex, and sugar, the, uh, the honey and butter, you know, the lenses that will just, you know, set your ass on fire. These, uh, these lenses that are just like wearing, uh, silk and having sex at the same time these are the lenses so what are they uh, number one in no particular order 2470 2.8 nikkor the 80 to 200 d series ed nikkor f 2.8 a very heavy very uh, high quality lens um, great rendition um, not extremely fast at autofocus so it's not a sports and action lens but it is a winner um, the only Nikkor lens to blow the absolute ass off of Zeiss 
Because there are two things that Zeiss actually fails at. Ultra-wides and macro lenses, in general. Not in specific, but in general. But this lens blew the hell out of Zeiss, and it blows the hell out of everybody else. For corner to corner, sharpness, saturation, autofocus, it's just exquisite. The 20mm f1.8 G series Nikkor. You know why you'll never find this lens used? Because anybody that owns it would never dare get rid of it. It is that damn good. You'll never find it used. Well, you might if someone has temporary insanity, but I've actually never seen a used one. I'm sure they exist somewhere at some rare moment in time, but in general they don't exist. Uh, the Swiss Army Knife of Lenses. Basically, this lens is the only lens that I know of, and I know them all, that uh, is perfect for uh, full frame and DX. Uh, it's perfect portrait lens. For DX, it's the best reproduction lens, it's a portrait lens, it's a macro lens. Now, obviously, it's not the best macro lens because every ma millimeter in, in macro counts. But this is the Swiss Army Knife of Lenses. You can typically find it for $200 used. It's still currently made, even though this lens has been made now for a long damn time. It's made in Japan. Production costs on this lens are pretty damn high. I will prognosticate and run my crystal ball that this lens will no longer be made probably by the end of next year, if not sooner, because it's too damn expensive to be made. You should grab one. If you don't have one, you're stupid. Flat out bar none. I don't care if you have a full frame. I don't care if you have a DX. You have to have a 60mm 2.8 D series autofocus in a core. Make you happy. It does everything. Next one, like I said, no particular order. Exact 100% same quality as Carl Zeiss, Casina, Voigtlander, Carl Zeiss, one and the same. Some Zeiss lenses are still made in Germany. This lens is made in Japan under Casina. It's the Voigtlander 58mm Noct. Okay, no different than the $1,600, however better made, better rendition, than the $1,600 58mm Nikkor Noct. Um, that lens is damn cheap. You can typically find it for about $380 used. It is easily, as far as quality, um, attributes, it is easily a $1,200 lens. Uh, that is the number one best value lens on planet Earth for the Nikon ecosystem. Bar none. Nothing comes close to it. Whether you buy it used or buy it new, it's like buying a Lamborghini for the price of a Volkswagen. I can't think of another analogy. You think of one. All right. Next one, countless, countless thousands of you bought this one. It doesn't matter if you buy the F3.5 series or the F2.8. It's the 135mm either AI or AIS Nikkor. Okay? built-in metal lens hood, the 135 millimeter, either the 3.5, which this one is, or the f2.8 Nikkor. Very, very cheap. It's been around for decades now. Exquisite, absolute perfection. Next lens, um, really rather cheap if you find it uh, used, and there are quite a few used ones that are like new from Japan. It's the Carl Zeiss Planar, 50 millimeter, a ZF2. That's what CF... Uh, with the uh, uh, with the contacts for use even on D3000 or D5000 series Nikon's, so ZF2 means it has CPU contacts in the rear mount of the lens. You typically can find these used like new for about $350. The micro contrast and the actual render depth are exquisite off of this lens. Now, would I recommend something other than this for cheaper? Yeah, it'll be the 50 millimeter f1.4, the brother of this, the actual Nikkor AIS. Also manual focus lens, this is manual focus, as also as well as the 58mm Voigtlander. This lens is silk, sex, and sugar. It is exquisite perfection. Now, up to thousands and thousands, this lens has been back-ordered since the dawn of time, ever since I started telling people about it. See, Takina, 100mm, 2.8. I made a few videos about this. If you don't know about it, then you've had your uh, head in the sand for quite some time. This lens is incredible. It's uh, priceless. Uh, it's a great portrait lens. It's an exquisite macro lens. It is the cat's ass. It's the tits. It's a must-own lens for $390. I think they're going to raise it to like four and a quarter. doesn't matter. Either way, it is worth it. Must-own. I have a couple of them. Why I have a couple of them, I have no idea. It's absolute perfection. Exquisite. Dreamy. Next, the king of all bokeh lenses. This will run you, I think, current new price is $1,050 or $1,100. I think they recently raised their price on it. This is the DC Nikkor, the 105. Now, nobody else can reproduce uh, this particular effect. you got front and rear bokeh control, where they call it uh, defocused image control. 
and this is the 105 millimeter f2 d autofocus nikkor this is the king of bokeh lenses if you are a bokeh slut or a bokeh slut i don't give a damn how you pronounce it bokeh bokeh tomato tomato potato potato this is the king of bokeh lenses it even beats out the e a 135 millimeter f2 uh, dc nikkor which i also happen to own this lens you can find typically used for about 800 bucks um, it is a priceless lens. It is beautiful. Well, why would you have this 105 over the Tekina? Well, this is this is that extra inch of perfection that will pad your portfolio and make you more money as a wedding or portrait photographer than uh, the Tekina. Is it worth that much more for the king of bokeh lenses? If you're making any money at all, it sure as hell is. Yes. Yes is the answer to that one. It's not a macro lens, it is a portraiture lens. Obviously you could use it for anything, but it is exquisite. It is divine, it's sublime, it is heaven sent. Now for many, many, many years now, the uh, uh, Nikkor 14-24, the $2,000 beast that it is, which I happen to also own, of course, um, was the king of wide zooms with a front element so bulbous, the uh, incapacity to stick a... Uh, a uh, protective uh, filter on it, um, should always have insurance on it. It has been king, it has dominated. Well, Tamron has kicked Nikon's ass. As I've told you in a prior video, the uh, best wide zoom on earth right now, yes, Tamron of all people, Tamron has really been kicking it lately. This lens is mind-boggling, it is incredible, it is awesome. This is the 15-30 to f2.8 Tamron. Oh my god! Um, now, ironically enough, if you want to find one of these, the people that seem to always have it in stock are Robert's Camera up in Indiana. I use Photo Pro Robert's Camera. They're all the same company. Here you can see the front element, the bulbous front element. Now, I call it the honking log for obvious reasons because it is a honking log. This lens is mind-blowing. Your nuggets will fall off and roll in the gutter. This lens is exquisite. The corner-to-corner -corner sharpness, the IQ, whether it's center or corner, blows the $2,000 14-24 out of the water. This lens is a must-own. I would not relinquish this unless it was out of my cold, dead hands. Next is a lens that is what to tell a photo portraiture that the 105mm DC Nikkor is to... Uh, to uh, headshot and uh, studio portraiture and that would be it's perfect for outdoor uh, wedding or event uh, portraiture exquisite color saturation exquisite perceptual depth exquisite rendered depth it is just the cat's ass the bees knees it, it's just the lens that makes you drool on yourself in happiness I've got six of them because I'm insane um, and this lens often can be found for dirt because not too many people know about it. It's been around for quite some time. It's made in Japan. It, it, this is one of the, my beat up ones, by the way. It's got a little dent in the lens hood there. Doesn't matter, still works perfectly. This is the 180 millimeter, 180 millimeter F2.8 D series autofocus Nikkor. It is awesome. How awesome. It is incredible. It is, oh my god. It is that good. I own six of them. I am that crazy over this lens. Oh, well, that's just your subjective opinion. Feeling about no, this lens really is that good. It's that damn good. It is that damn good. Now, on to two Carl Zeiss lenses. The best lens to me that I have in general overall. The only lens that uh, to me, I say humorously, that's above the level of the tits, which would be a, a 10 out of 10. And this lens would be a 12 out of 10. Well, how could you be a 12 out of 10? I don't know, but this lens does it. Because by God, I've owned and used thousands of lenses. And this lens is kick-ass. It blows the hell out of everything else that I have. That is the Carl Zeiss. And oh, great, Carl Zeiss doesn't make this lens anymore. You can still find a buttload of them in Asia on eBay. Call somebody in Japan, have them find one for you. They're all over the place in Japan. The Carl Zeiss Distagon F2. 35 millimeter, either the ZF or the ZF2, doesn't matter which one. That's the 35 millimeter Carl Zeiss Distagon. Micro contrast, rendition, color saturation, sharpness is unbelievable. The sharpness is off the scale. Unbelievable, unbelievable. 
Um, after I recommended this lens, everybody that got it was like, Oh my god, this lens is incredible. Only, word per <laughs> only one person in Eastern Europe bought this lens. And he complained. He said, This lens sucks. And he sent me pictures. And there was... Uh, there was bad uh, flare and all sorts of crud going on. And then I had him says that's not right. Nope, nope. I had him send me pictures of the back of the lens, and someone had taken that beast apart, and God knows how they put it back together. I mean, there were obvious signs of tampering. It was probably broken, and uh, some lunatic took it apart. So <laughs> anybody that buys this lens is nothing less than 100% absolutely happy with it because it is frigging incredible. Um, the next video I'm going to concentrate on the series of 85 millimeters. And this is the very last lens out of the 14 that I've shown you here. It is this lens. It blows. This lens, you think, like, oh my god, look at that gigantic gaping hole on this lens. That Carl Zeiss Planar 85 millimeter ZF2. You're thinking, oh my god, that lens must cost a fortune. It costs a good bit less than the 35 millimeter uh, G series uh, Nikkor. A lot less. How much less? Well, basically as new, $950,000. This lens is basically almost $600 less than the equivalent Nikkor, and it blows the Nikkor out of the water. So the Nikkor with plastic, inferior construction, not as sharp, not as good, not a good rendition. For $600, this lens is far better. Far better made, rendition, sharpness, corner to corner. Um, Micro contrast, which is very important if you're going to do black and white portraiture, micro contrast is absolutely essential to black and white portraiture. If you don't know, if you are a lover, you are a slut of black and white photography, and you are using lenses that don't have good micro contrast, then you are hanging from a rope. You are, you are, you've got, that's the weak link in the chain of your black and white photography. This is what you want. Um, for $1,000, this is a lens that will far outlast you. Even if you're 20 years right now and you live to be 100, it will still outlast you. This lens is worth every bit of what it costs and then some, and it is still a lot cheaper than the much crappier Nikkor 85mm f1.4. So, I meant for this to be 10 lenses, but I had to include 14. This video took me a lot of time to come to the decision. Well, he just laid out some of his lenses there. He's just talking out of his fanny. What does he know? No, I didn't. I gave this a lot of thought. These lenses, they say, well, if you had to, do, I've got like 140 lenses now, and I've owned thousands, and I used to repair lenses. I used to repair cameras. I've used them all, especially back in the camera stores. You know, I get to borrow stuff over the weekend, you know, play with stuff. Some of the really, really, really expensive oddball rare stuff even that uh, is worth a fortune today. Got to play with that stuff as well. These are it. These are it. Um, we have, like I said, one Voigtlander, uh, three Zeisses, and uh, one Tamron, and the rest of these are Nikors. But all of these, and like I said, you'll notice that only two of these are zoom lenses. Oh, three, excuse me, there are three zoom lenses here. 24-70, 80-200, and the Tamron uh, 15-30. to Sorry about that. Um, I was thinking a thousand steps ahead. I caught myself on that one. But that's it. 24-70 Nikkor. 20mm uh, 1.8G Nikkor. 80-200 to to D-Series Autofocus Nikkor. The 60mm uh, D-Series, okay, or Pre-D. The Pre-D or the D, 60mm f2.8. The uh, Voigtlander Nocton 58mm f1.4. The 135mm f2.8 or f2.5 Nikkor. Okay. Old lens, absolutely exquisite. The Carl Zeiss Planar, uh, 50 millimeter f 1.4. The uh, Tokina, 100 millimeter f 2.8 macro lens, perfect for portraiture. Also, the absolute king of the universe for bokeh lenses, the 105 millimeter f 2 DC Nikkor. Uh, the god of ultra wides now, the Tamron 15 to 30, 1500 dollars, a thousand dollars. Well. Basically, eleven, not fifteen hundred. Excuse me, one thousand one hundred to one thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, I don't think there are very few used ones. Um, so basically, eleven hundred dollars new. The Tamron uh, fifteen to thirty f two point eight, and uh, the one hundred eighty millimeter f two point eight Nikkor, and uh, the best lens that I've ever had and probably ever will have to be certain. Um, my best lens, favorite lens in the whole wide world because it is a 12 out of 10. Um, it hovers off the ground because it is so angelic. That is the Carl Zeiss uh, ZF2, 
the uh, 35 millimeter F2, and uh, lastly, the Carl Zeiss Planar 85 millimeter F1.4 portraiture lens, the one lens that is just all of these lenses are the lenses that will just make you melt. Just go, oh my god. And uh, I did give this video a lot of thought. I hope this helped you out. Um, there is no way in hell, unless you buy a broken lens or someone has taken a screwdriver to one of these lenses. In other words, if you buy an intact lens, there's no way in hell that if you buy one of these lenses you're unhappy with it, that you got to screw loose and you belong in a padded room because you are just bat nuts crazy. There's something wrong with you mentally if you buy one of these lenses and it's not screwed up and you're unhappy with it. It's just, that's it. That's it. Now, some of them have their own quirks, but I went over a long list of attributes, like obviously so, the 80 to 200 is not a sports lens, so you're not going to be using this at the racetrack. Okay, for the horses or the sports cars, because it's not a really, really, really fast autofocus lens. But is it exquisite in other attributes? And the 24 to 70 is not really, 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 really sharp. But it's got a billion other attributes. This lens has made more photographers more money than any other lens. Period. Canon, Leica, Zeiss, doesn't matter who the hell it is. This lens and this lens right here. So each one has its own little quirk. However, the uh, Zeiss there has absolutely no quirks. <laughs> none at all and it never will and it isn't even made anymore oh my god Zeiss you're stupid you're so stupid um, actually it's still made but they've totally redesigned it into the middle of this lens and they've kind of ruined the ergonomics and uh, they, yeah someone is always trying to perfect perfection and they end up screwing with something if it ain't broke don't screw with it but anyway that's the 14 lenses I'm glad I could help you out um, uh, this is written in stone, and uh, I have spoken. <laughs> um, if you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two, or go tell me to jump off a cliff. But there's no way in hell you're going to buy one of these lenses uh, that you're going to be unhappy with it. No way in hell. Period. Bore none. Unless someone took it apart and jacked with it. In which case, I obviously have nothing to do with that. Okay? Get it? Got it? Good. Lux Iveritas. Bye.